easiest way to get hurt when you work out is by not breathing properly. This week, we bring you the breathing techniques that are going to give you tremendous mileage in your workout. You think you don't have enough time? Let me show you some power pack exercise routine. Today, we're going to look at the new Samsung Gear Fit. When we are born, our first breath is also our first resistance exercise. And this is the exact same exercise that we forget to do when we start exercising. Isn't it ridiculous? Getting your breath back is as back to basics as you can possibly get. Many people tend to hold their breath when they have to do anything physically challenging. It's called the Valsava Maneuver and it's got no place in the gym. Exercising is not and should not feel like pushing against a wall. Holding your breath like this limits oxygen delivery to the muscles and to the brain and the internal pressure in your chest can rapidly increase causing your blood pressure to rise dangerously high and this can cause dizziness, fainting, painful exercise induced headaches and for those at risk even stroke. But incorrect breathing could also mean that you're breathing too fast or breathing too slow. So what is that one perfect breathing technique? There isn't any. It all depends on the kind of exercise that you're doing. In yoga, breath is considered the life force or prana and the art of breathing is taught as pranayam. This consists of a series of controlled breathing exercises that helps alleviate stress, opens your lungs and strengthens the breath passages of the body. But apart from pranayam, the role of breath is also very important in the practice of asanas or yoga postures. Every asan comes with a byline of how to use your breath while performing the asan. The breath, they say, connects us to our emotions, which would otherwise create tension in muscles, stiffness and blockages to the flow of prana. Breathing comes naturally to us. We need the oxygen so we inhale and we need to get rid of the carbon dioxide so we exhale. Yet very few of us actually manage to use our lungs to its full capacity. Most of us at rest use just about 10 to 20% of our total lung capacity. Diaphragmatic breathing allows for deeper, fuller breaths and better oxygen delivery. Here's how to do it. Breathe deeply enough that your belly, not your chest, rises and falls. If this does not come naturally, you can practice belly breathing by lying flat on your back with a book on your abdomen. Slowly inhale as you watch the book rise and then lower the book by slowly exhaling. When we exercise, our working muscles demand more oxygen and we produce more carbon dioxide as a result. Obviously, this is going to increase your rate of respiration. Cardio exercises specifically put an overload on our respiratory systems and our bodies, they adapt beautifully to that over time. The breathing muscles, the massive diaphragm and the intercostal muscles in the ribs become stronger and more fatigue resistant over time, along with the muscles in the chest and the neck, which pull the ribcage upwards during inhalation and the abdominal muscles, which pull it down in exhalation. And this stronger musculature allows for more oxygen-rich air to get sucked in with every breath. The lung capacity also increases over time and oxygen starts reaching all the alveoli inside the lung from where it seeps into the blood and gets transported all over the body. Within the blood, there is a gradual increase in blood volume as the body responds by creating more red blood cells that carry oxygen. All this means a massive increase in your overall breathing capacity. Weightlifting comes with its own set of breathing rules and being able to breathe well as you lift the heavy stuff means you're going to be lifting efficiently and safely. When lifting weights or doing any kind of exertion exercise, keep these simple rules in mind. Never hold your breath. 
Exhale as you're doing the hardest work and inhale as you're coming back to your starting position. Properly breathing while you stretch after your workouts helps you to increase your flexibility. Many people tend to hold their breath during stretching or take short, shallow, desperate breaths. But ideally, we should take deep, relaxed, diaphragmatic breaths. On every exhale, try to relax more fully and give in to the stretch a little bit more. Becoming more aware of your breath can help you feel more comfortable. It can avoid complications like dizziness or fainting because of lack of oxygen. Moreover, it can help you get more out of your workout. The time for talking has long gone. It's the time to walk the walk, to push your body to the limit and optimize the time spent to maximize results. In an ever-growing health-aware environment, I am a fitness junkie and anything that would make an iota of a difference in my performance is well worth trying out. Alright, first things first. I have put the Samsung Gear Fit on and my initial reaction is, well, a long screen does need some time getting used to. And the plastic strap does make the gadget feel a bit tacky. But on the upside, once you power it up, the curved Super AMOLED screen is an absolute delight with the eye-popping colour and clarity. Now, let's put its functionality to the test. This magic band provides superior connectivity. That is today, common to most Samsung wearable technology with customised real-time fitness coaching to provide unique, personalised advice and workout recommendations. The device claims to keep its users abreast with all their daily activities and schedules by simple notification alerts on their wrists, be that emails, SMSs, planners or for that matter even from third-party apps on your phone. The changeable straps come in three colours and are interchangeable to suit your mood or your attire. The band helps you control the connected devices, which in the Galaxy Fit's case implies primarily your Samsung phone and everything from volume control to notifications all show up. The band helps you control the connected devices, which in the Galaxy Fit's case implies primarily your Samsung phone and everything from volume control to notifications all show up. All you need to do is swipe the red X across the screen to dismiss a notification or swipe the yellow ZZ icon to hit snooze mode. The device also allows you to monitor incoming calls along with sending out a predetermined SMS to the caller if you choose not to take the call. However, this smartwatch is not designed from the ground up to be a hands-free, so one does still need to use their phone to talk. Halfway there and now I've been cycling for 30 minutes. Frankly, I'm very impressed by the way the strap has gripped my wrist and the screen is just wow. All my calls have been successfully diverted, so there's nothing that can come between my spin cycle and me today. And my heart rate seems rather accurate, so let's push this up a notch. The Samsung Fit Band is only compatible with the Samsung phones, so if you're not yet on the Samsung bandwagon, this one is not for you. The device comes with its own software and once you install it into your phone or tablet, the Gear Fit configures itself to that and it is a good application. The device is semi-waterproof and can withstand 30 minutes underwater to a depth of 1 meter. Personally, all that means is it's sweat resistant and pretty durable. The charging dongle is a little awkward and could use some working on. In conclusion, GearFit is a gorgeous looking piece of technology with simple and effective interface. But it feels like a work in progress and a step in the right direction. You need to ask yourself though, is getting your phone notifications on your wrist worth the cost? Or the fact that it's not compatible with anything other than a Samsung is not a problem for you, then I think this is definitely something you would like to flash on your wrist.